an Alabama tape production. Welcome everybody to Taking On Sports. I am TD. That is Greg. Greg, how are you doing today, man? I am good. How are you today, sir? I'm pretty good. It's fall officially, I think, in Birmingham. At least our, you know, that first one you get, and then it'll go back to maybe being a little warmer. Right. Back, but it's chilly enough. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, it's football season weather. Yeah, they um, do. Making sense as we are deep in the throes of football season. Uh, big weekend in the college ranks. We'll start with our Crimson Tide, of course. Um, not a pretty win. Uh, that's for sure. It started out great. Um, Start off good, yeah. Yeah, good Good lead. Uh, looked like they are just going to be able to roll, and then the offense just stalled out. Um, and the defense, I guess, just got tired, you know? Um, yeah. Arkansas makes a little comeback. Uh, Alabama holds on late. Uh, they do get big conversions from the offense when they need it, so yeah. uh, there's a positive. But, yeah, uh, what are your thoughts on the game yesterday? You know, just uh, I don't. It's just one. It just seemed like one of those games where you get a lead and everybody just got super complacent and stop, stop playing. Um, you know, we see that. You know, you see it all the time in games, and hopefully it doesn't involve your team. And yesterday it was us, but uh, you know, we are able to hold on there. Um, you know. It happens, uh, you know. I guess the big thing with that is just it's probably a good thing though to get, get that to get them get them refocused again because you know there was a lot of a lot of hype, you know, about the team after the A and M win there, and uh, you know maybe some of them are starting to really feel themselves. Um, so taking uh, that rat poison in, yeah. Some of it, and you know, another thing too. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, Arkansas—they're not—they're not a terrible team. They're, yes, they only have two wins, but they—they have talent. You know, they've rarely been blown out. They played everybody really—I mean, pretty close. So you knew that at some point they were going to give a fight. Um, so you know, when you fall fall asleep like that, you know that's going to wait. They had the opportunity to be—you know—come back. You know. They're a prideful, prideful team. I mean, Sam Pittman guys play hard, so one yeah, and shocked by that. At the Arkansas matchup for Alabama has always been particularly ugly. Um, yeah, you know, some losses in the '90s and then mm-hmm. early 2000s. Um, you know, we were there for one or two. Yeah, uh, it just always seems to be an ugly game on the Alabama schedule. I mean, occasionally, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll take them for a team that we've never lost to under Nick Saban. You know, Nick Saban has now beaten Arkansas every year since he yes. took over in Tuscaloosa, which is crazy. Um, right. It's even crazier when you think that there are multiple teams that that could or almost, I mean, he's only lost the one time the state, his first season, right. Just lost to Tennessee for the first time last season. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that Arkansas game is always ugly. It seems like, or at least it's uglier than most other regular matchups for the Tide. Um, right. But yeah, there's not really much to say about that game. I think he made some good points. Now Saban has some coaching uh, points that he can go over. Right. Um, I guess. I guess the most worrisome thing still remains that line. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, like I know, like like Proctor, he's eighteen. I know that he's young. And this year, he's gonna learn a lot, and it's gonna make him better for the future. But man, that left side, <laughs> yeah, know, against just don't know <laughs> against opposing lines and uh, coordinators that can scheme up to take advantage of that line, or guys that can just do it with a four man rush. Even worse, yeah. you know. It's one thing if. Uh, you know, people are sending blitzes and getting pressure, and then we can take advantage of that. You know, that right. used to happen. You know, when Tua was our quarterback, he used to – we I loved when people blitzed us. He'd find one of those receivers on the slant somewhere, and then right. they're gone to the house. Yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, something that's playing with fire for sure. Um, Jalen getting hit that many times uh, hasn't burned us directly. You know, most of his interceptions are just bad decisions, but – 
Right. You know, eventually it's that's a strip sack or like he's hit while throwing yeah. and that's picked, you know, that's waiting to happen exactly. there. Or he gets hurt. Yeah. 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 I mean that's worst case scenario. He, he gets yeah. injured and we saw we saw what that looks like. So <laughs> I don't think that's what we want to see for the rest of the season, especially with the games coming up. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Probably the two biggest games of the season coming up right now. I mean, yeah. I mean, two. You know, hate week of course. Looking mm-hmm. for revenge there. Yeah. And then we get the bye week, and then of course LSU. Yeah. Two. Basically, you know, determines our fate <laughs> mm-hmm. of you know whether it's the. Going to the SEC championship game, um, you know, stay in the playoff on the night. So, yeah, big, two big games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, not, not, again, like I said before, not much to say about this one, really. Alabama won. They held on. Um, and that's that. Like you said, it's hate yep. week now. It's, get ready for Tennessee. Yes, and get some revenge yeah, yeah. for last year. Get a big <laughs> cross-divisional win. Now, you know. And uh, go into that bye week before LSU. For sure. Uh, of course, the yesterday's heavyweight bout was Washington and Oregon, and it lived up to all the hype. Um, it definitely did. Back and forth, a late winner, Michael Penix throws a late touchdown. Uh, the Huskies hold on and stop Oregon. Uh, huge win for them. They're up to, I believe they climbed as high as, what, fifth in the AP poll? Yeah, I think they're five, yep. Yeah. Yeah, um, which quite frankly surprises me and just tells you how much a lot of these voters just set their top 25 at the beginning of the year and then just go off that, which is yeah a weird way to do it for me. I've, I understand having a preseason top 25, but pretty much after the first week or two, I'd probably make a lot of changes. Yeah, I mean, um, some stuff you could definitely put. put yeah, I, put I would have no idea. Got, they get two first place votes, and I have no problem. I think I would probably put them number one. That's the best one of the year right now, right? Um, but yeah, uh, just a, a great back and forth game. I mentioned the, the late winner. Uh, I mean, what, what do you think? Is Washington the best team in the country right now? They're definitely in that. They're definitely in that top tier. Um, you got offense is elite. That receiving core, Michael Penix. <laughs> I mean, they're a fantastic team. Um, and I guess, you know, you question some of the defense, but at the same time, at key moments, they got they did what they needed to do against a good Oregon offense. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they're maybe not the best defense, but they do enough that they're not going to cost you a game either. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then that's – but that offense, too, you can have that kind of bend but don't break defense. Right. Um, yeah, because that, that offense – is elite. Yeah, Same they time, don't have though, bad days. They don't. But I will say, you know, uh, I guess the biggest question is, uh, you know, some of Dan Lanning. You know, you, you like to see it. You know, you like to see a guy stick to his guns and mm-hmm. know what he wants to do in certain situations. But, man, he may have cost them the game with a couple of those uh, times. He may have probably mm-hmm. should have kicked the field goal. I mean, and that's he, just his he, style. He, he, he said he came out and said he took 100% of that loss on him. Um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, you do. If, if they convert that fourth down late in the game, then everyone praises it and, you know, oh, the, his yeah. aggressiveness won the game or whatever. Um, right. So that's just one of those things. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just one of those 50-50 things. And- it's tough, though, yeah, because the, the risk reward, you know, the reward is obviously you get a huge first down late, maybe you run out the clock and right. win that game. The risk is not only do you give Michael Penix in that offense the ball back, but you give him back half a field. Yeah. Right. And I think that was the big thing. And, yeah, if, yeah. why not try to punt and pin him deep? Or even worst Let's case, you know, the punt, you punt, and it's a touchback. That's still 80 yards yeah. that got to go instead of 50. Exactly. Um, and for the most part, that second half, that Oregon defense had held pretty good because, I mean, they, they scored with one touchdown before that. And they really started getting to Mike a little bit. So, you know, for the second half, that Oregon defense looked pre- pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think that was a bit, and I don't think we've heard the last of Oregon. Um, oh, I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. knowing what we know and the game we're about to talk about in the team, if Oregon wins mm-hmm. out the rest of their schedule and we get a rematch yeah. of this game in the Pac-12 title game. I don't think anybody would be mad about that at all. <laughs> uh-uh. Because, um, I mean, it, 
and lived up to the hype, and you'd have to think that, that it's be pretty much the same type of game should they see each other in December. Mm-hmm. Uh, a team that took a big tumble in the top 25 rankings this week, mm-hmm. uh, USC Trojans go to South Bend and get dominated by the Irish. How? Uh, yeah. yeah, it was not. It was never a game. Uh, Notre Dame just thoroughly beat them up. That's this is old school, just bully ball. I think kind of what Marcus Freeman would want to play there. It seems to be the kind of football he wants to play. Is run yeah. and a dominating defensive performance. Three interceptions, first ever for Caleb Williams in his career. Uh, just absolutely bullied them. Um, yeah. And I think it was a little surprising because, I mean, granted, they did give up 48 points on defense, but they didn't lose because of that. They lost because the Notre Dame defense absolutely shut down their offense. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, yeah, how surprising was that? Yeah, that that was – I mean, I don't think I've ever seen USC look that bad um, offensively since Caleb Williams has been under center. <laughs> I mean <laughs> – they, you know, that's the one thing you didn't ever think was going to be the problem in USC was going to be the offense. <laughs> um, but, you know, credit to Notre Dame. They, uh, you know, got at, got at them early, forced some turnovers, able to get the big lead from that. And, you know, first time that really Caleb Williams really looked more. <laughs> you know, he's had quite, quite the – last year was amazing. For most of this year was amazing. And he just looked very average mm-hmm. <laughs> last night. May have, uh, may uh, based upon other people's season performances, may have pushed them back a little in the Heisman race as well. Absolutely, sure. yeah. Uh, we just talked about Michael Penix Jr. I'm pretty sure he yeah. took the lead. Oh, yeah, for sure. No doubt um, about it. You know, until Jalen Milrow catches him, of course. Oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, th- I thought that was the, the big – surprise to me was just that that happened the way it did and it wasn't like yeah a shootout loss which we all thought was coming for us yeah i thought you know? yeah i thought you know i thought that was gonna be you know something where um you know the notre dame defense they're you no know, physical defense but i thought that they the athletes had have an issue staying up with them uh, you mm-hmm. know those talented wide receivers at usc you know eventually we get able to get past them Score some touchdowns, and I, you know, I thought on the other end that they would be able to score just because that USC defense is not, not great, <laughs> but a yeah. completely different game than we all expected for sure. Over by the end of the first quarter, pretty much. I mean, after uh-huh. that, it was kind of not really a game at all. No, and it's kind of. <laughs> it, it wasn't just like, and that's not even saying that in retrospect. It, that's uh-huh. like watching that game live. You just kind of like, yeah. After that first quarter, you're like. I don't think USC is going to come back. Yeah. Um, even yeah, but, with that explosive yeah, yeah. offense, which normally you're like, okay, yeah. like at some point they're going to like drop 20 points in a five minute span here. Yeah, you just didn't but, feel that that was going to happen at all. You mm-hmm. know, even like when they got down to like Arizona, you were like, well, you just had a feeling that they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. But yesterday there was that, there was just not, never a thought that they're going to come back. You just thought, dang, this is quite impressive. And then, there's, you know, the craziest thing, though, just with all the other games that happened, you know, you, you saw what happened like Louisville after they bullied Notre Dame mm. the week before. So every week is just, you never know. <laughs> That's yeah. what makes it even crazier. It's that kind of season. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, for all, you know, we say that about Washington being the best uh, team in the country right now, but I don't, there's not, to me, there's not like a, Georgia yeah, last year or an Alabama no. or LSU from years past where it's like, okay, that is the best team. And then there's everybody else. Right. It is just, no. there's a top tier of teams, but that's a really big number. Yeah. There's that second tier, which is huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's no one that you're like, yeah, they're definitely head and shoulders. Yeah. Definitely no one you're saying, Oh, they're head and shoulders above everybody. No, yeah. no favorites. Um, and yeah, I think, I mean, crazy thing, we're not even to November yet when even more crazy things happen. <laughs> so, we have, I think we're quite, and for quite a few more surprises throughout the season for what we've seen thus far. Yeah. Um, across the country, 
uh, or down. Uh, a game that should have been bigger if not for Mario Cristobal's uh, lack of coaching awareness last week. <laughs> uh, North Carolina, Miami. Uh, North Carolina took it to them. Ended up being a 10 point game, but it was really yeah, North Carolina's offense. Way worse than what it looked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you felt maybe there's a couple times that even if Miami got close or was really in it, you just like that you didn't get the feeling they were going to make a play on defense. And they didn't. Right. No, nope, um, not at all. So now's the question is do we have to start taking, or is it long past time that now we've, that we talk about North Carolina not only as maybe an ACC uh, title contender, but as a playoff contender? Mm hmm. Uh, do you agree with that? They're a playoff contender. Uh, I, you know, they're they're almost there to me. I don't know. I think maybe it's just because of more than a North Carolina. <laughs> do we mm-hmm. kind of give them kind of the? Uh, no, nah, maybe not. But yeah, I mean, based upon what they're doing, and the thing is, they're getting better every week. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're looking good. I mean. I mean, you got. I guess they do have them to do. I mean, it's, I guess we're taking more courses at basketball school, but yeah, they're they're playing good football and they've been beating folks pretty soundly. It's not, you know, last year they had a lot of close games and um, you know they're giving up a, a lot of points and having to fight for wins. This year they're putting people to sleep, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then they got their guy back. He got off the. NCAA finally gave him his eligibility, and he had a heck of a game yesterday. So. Right. And just another weapon. And, you know, Drake May, he's having a heck of a season. He's really – his stock is climbing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of Alabama fans are thinking what could have been had he stayed committed Man. to the Tide. Um, yeah. Can't blame the guy for not wanting to sit behind, you know. Like, I guess he was sat behind Mac and then Bryce. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, elsewhere, a uh, game with two teams, uh, coming back from losses, uh, a result I didn't expect Missouri goes into Kentucky and wins fairly easily. Yeah. Uh, 38, 21. They really, um, that second half, they really took it to them. Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, Missouri is really showing that they're, they're a pretty good team. Yeah. You know, um. You know, for, you know, when they first beat Kansas State, it was like, well, that's nice. But, you know, maybe Kansas State isn't that good. But then, you know, Missouri is really a good team. Like, they could have easily won that LSU game last week in that shootout. Well, um, that's a, yeah, really their, took... only, their only loss is that LSU game against that offense. Right. And they yeah. they could have, and you argue, maybe yeah. even should have won that game at certain points. They exactly. had it. Um, and they beat a good Memphis team. Um, they did beat a good Memphis team. Yeah, this they, Kentucky when this was in Lexington, a place where Kentucky is pretty tough to beat. Mm-hmm. It was a rainy, rainy night, um, mm-hmm. and at times they out physical them, and that doesn't happen that much in Kentucky. But yeah. you know, of course, we've seen it against the Georgia type, but you no know, more of the Mims, I guess, considered more of the second tier of the SEC, doesn't happen that much, and they really right. took a tune there. And you look at the, you know, the rest of that. Uh, you know, this, outside of the Georgia game, I mean, this team could very well be 10-2 and two at the end of the year. Yeah, that's a very winnable. They get South Carolina next week, a bye before mm-hmm. they have to go to Athens. And, okay, look, mm-hmm. we know they played them probably close not. last year, but look what happened to <laughs> Kentucky and Athens. Like, yeah. that's probably. Yeah, um, probably not. Probably not happening. Yeah, then they get Tennessee and Florida at home. And they can ease, they yeah. can beat both of those I mean, teams. Those are those are two winnable games. I mean, they could lose. Those are two toss up games, for, of course. But yeah, they're, they're, there's nothing that says they couldn't win those. And mm-hmm. of course, they ended exactly. the year with Arkansas. And by that point, who knows what Arkansas is even looking like? If they've lost some more games, what what do they feel like even putting out on the field? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, who, um, who who knows? But yeah, they could very well be a ten and. Ten and two team at the end of the year, New Year Six type of caliber that. team. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that could be you know depending on what happens with the All right. SEC title and playoff teams sure. like that could be a Sugar Bowl. Yeah, right there. Yeah, most definitely, and that's a quite quite a turnaround from a guy that was came in the season on the hot seat. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, elsewhere, uh, um. 
I see. Talking to the big teams, they all won real easy games. We'll blow out Georgia, oh, yeah. Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, Penn State, all big wins. Yeah. Um, Do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's all right. Point blank, that's all you need to say about those. Uh, <laughs> some second tier uh, ranked matchup Oregon State uh, beat UCLA and Corvallis. Um, it's kind of a back and forth affair, uh, kind of a mm-hmm. ugly game. Um, considering that you know, Oregon, Oregon State, that, uh, right now, Oregon State defense is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they, um, they had their slip up, and you know, retrospect now that's looking really surprising. Um, yeah, it was a road game though, but yeah, they, um, uh, speaking of teams with favorable schedules, Oregon State. I mean, their mm-hmm. next three at least, you know, they go. They have to go to Arizona and Colorado. Um, then they get mm-hmm. Stanford at home. You, know, you would think they're favored for all three of those games. That put them yeah, at nine wins. So. Yeah. And then they have, of course, their closing. Their last two weeks are killer. You know, it's home for Washington and then at Oregon for Civil War. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. Uh, let's see. Elsewhere, Tennessee. Uh, Held on to beat A and M. Speaking of that game, that ugly game kind of got uglied up. Yeah, it was a yeah, that was an ugly game. Neither yeah, team uh, looked really dangerous. Not at all. I mean, both both offenses were pretty bad. Um, Tennessee had some solid moments running the ball, um, but neither man. As much as you know, after last year and all the hype of that Tennessee passing game, I mean, they really took a big step back in that department for sure. The running game is much better this year. Their defense is probably better, but the, I'm just surprised that you know how bad that pa- that passing game has really looked this year. Milton is definitely not the, not the, who a lot of people thought he was going to be coming into the season. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of he has the same inconsistency problems that he's had plague him the whole throughout time. the rest of his career. Yeah, and you know yeah. it, it hurts losing guys like Jalen Hyatt. You know to yeah because with his arm too, those I mean those would be. Some deep yeah, bombs, some crazy, um, exactly. But um, yeah, uh, just that Tennessee offense is winning ugly. You know, they can win running the ball, um, mm-hmm. which was you know weird against that A and M defense. Uh, but yeah, um, Elser SEC LSU spanked Auburn. Um, it was kind of o- over early. Yeah, um, it was just kind of they a just slow. Don't burn. Have the, they just don't have the. They just don't have the even against. And they just didn't have any way to score points. I mean, that, until they get once they get a quarterback, Auburn will be okay. But right now, that yeah. quarterback play is so bad. Like <laughs> they, they, they have need no a, they need a, game at all. Yeah, they need a few things. Um, yeah, they just need yeah that recruiting has slipped off there yeah. the past few years. Um, uh, Duke pretty solid win over NC State. They keep rolling mm-hmm. on. Um, some upsets this week in the top 25. You mentioned earlier Louisville after their big win over Notre hmm. Dame went to Pitt and just got kind of pushed around themselves. Ouch. Um, and that's a bad Pitt team. That's a yeah, one win not team a, coming into that game. <laughs> yeah, this is not one of those like sneaky good Pitt teams where you don't realize no. it and all of a sudden they're like eight and two or something. You're like, oh, uh, this is a like, bad, this is a horrible Pitt team. I was, yeah, I was shot. I mean, because. They've looked horrible. I mean, you look at and they've lost every game. I mean, they even got. I mean, Virginia Tech beat them pretty soundly. I mean, this is not a good Pitt team at all. And you know, Louisville was getting a lot of a lot of hype, and rightfully mm-hmm. so. I mean, they, they really took it to uh, Notre Dame last week and this week. It's just like, what <laughs> is this even the same team? <laughs> like, it's crazy. Yeah, that's a really disappointing loss if you're Louisville. Um, yeah. You really could have. Uh, you could have gotten. You made some momentum. Uh, made some noise if you were them. Exactly. After such a big win oh, for yeah. that program, that first year, the new regime. Uh, you know they got they get a buy this week. The end of Jeez. month, they get a home date with Duke. It would have been huge. I mean, it still is. Yeah, um, it's still a big game, but lost a little bit less yeah. there. <laughs> now they're marching for error of like sneaking into the. ACC title game is just, you know, it's slim now. <laughs> they have to win out yeah. basically to have a chance. Right. And it's not a hard schedule because they get Duke at home, then they get Virginia Tech at home, and we mentioned how bad they right. are. Um, uh, get Virginia at home. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, that's a winnable game. Uh, go sure. to Miami, and we've mm-hmm. seen that, you know, Miami <laughs> is Miami. Much, yeah, uh, they can win in Miami, and then they would in you know, with a non-conference game, the rivalry game at Kentucky, or home for right. Kentucky. So, yeah. But, and yeah, that's, that's a bad loss. Yeah, it's a, a bad loss. I mean, it's they're still way ahead of what, what they sh- what people expected them to be, but yeah, definitely not the one that you wanted to be your first loss of the season. If they lost the first game, maybe if it was a Duke game, understandable. But last night, I was like, what the, what in the world? But I guess that's just you no know, college football for you. I mean, you know, the, these guys are at that age group, no matter how talented or, you know, even if they're a better team, you know, sometimes the 18 to 20, it's, should we, you know, 18 to 21 yeah. year old guys, <laughs> you never know. I mean, heck, you uh, get up every week and, you know, be ready to go. I mean, it's, it's tough to do. And, you know, punch, sometimes you get punched in the mouth and it's, you just have no response. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of weird results and blowouts, uh, Arizona went into Pullman oh my and beat the ever loving shit out of Washington State. Uh, yeah. like what, 44 yeah. to 6? Uh, yeah, they uh, the, 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 stomped a mud hole in them. And the surprising thing wow. was in Pullman. You know, if it happened yeah. in Tucson, you'd still be surprised at the score, but you're like, Arizona does that at home. Yeah. But to go into Pullman, where Washington State's so tough to beat, uh, and not and only beat them, but how? just beat them, like, yeah, and that just you know, uh, it was a good start of the season, but they really, you know, mm-hmm. they took a tough loss to UCLA last week, and then mm-hmm. uh, you know Arizona came in, but you know, good for Arizona because I mean they've been close throughout. I mean they were right with Mississippi State, they were right with USC on um, two mm-hmm. games that they could have won. Um, you know, they're, they're, you can see that they're improving. They're getting better. Uh, they seem to have the right coaching staff in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was a big, big win for their program for sure. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and on the other side, I mean, they're looking very, you know, Cam, Cam Ward looks so good through the first four weeks of the season. And now it's like, wow. <laughs> oh yeah. He's kinda, been made. I don't know look. what's going on. There. Yeah. Pretty bad, yeah, the past couple of yeah. uh, seasons there. Um, or games, I'm sorry. Um, and then I uh, uh, see, uh, oh, Oklahoma State upset Kansas. Uh, I actually called that yeah. one in the bets column Friday. Did you? Wow. So, just something about it. I was like, you know, Kansas, no Jalen Daniels. Uh, mm-hmm. It just felt kind of weird, you know. Yeah. Um. And even then, they almost, I mean, they got the lead late. And, oh, yeah, yeah, no, Kansas, that was just a good comeback. Oklahoma State, you know, they're not as dangerous as they have been in recent years, mm-hmm. but um, no. they might be better than people thought they would be this year. Right. Um, And then Friday night was a very interesting game. Um, that it was. Colorado hosted Stanford. Seemed like a should be an easy win for Colorado, and then they went up twenty nine and nothing at halftime. They were rolling along, uh, and then just everything fell apart. Uh, they mm-hmm. let a pretty Employed. bad Stanford team. We talk about that Pitt team. You know, this is a bad mm-hmm. Stanford team. It is um, very bad. Just shut them down the second half. Come back and uh, steal the game in overtime. Um, yeah. Uh, 46, 43, uh, just a bad loss for even, you know, Colorado's a rebuilding team. But that's um, still a bad loss. Yeah. Like I said, that's a bad stand for team. You're up 29 points at halftime at home. At home. Shador Sanders still throws 400 yards and five touchdowns. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's not like. You still put up the stat line. Yeah. But they man, just. That, that wide receiver for Stanford, his second half stat line, mm-hmm. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like two Ayo manner. Yeah, yeah. He finished like two. with two hundred ninety-four yards on thirteen yeah. catches with three TDs, and yeah, yeah. In the second half alone, he had a ninety-seven-yard touchdown reception, a sixty-yard touchdown reception. Um, right, and then in overtime, had a thirty-yard touchdown reception. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the most ridiculous catches of the season, too. Yeah, touchdown. yeah, just absolutely mm-hmm. That's uh, ridiculous. Made, yeah, embarrassed that Colorado secondary the second half. Um, 
Uh, Travis Hunter was back and did help out immensely for Colorado. They had him on a play mm-hmm. count, and it seemed like he played more offensive snaps than uh, defensive. And he had and he had a great game himself: thirteen catches for buck forty and two touchdowns. Um, yeah. You know, he yeah. might be a better receiver long term. Mm-hmm. That's just my thoughts. I mean, he's that. Di- I mean, he's solid in the secondary, but I think overall. And long term NFL wise, I think his calling might be as a receiver because he's dynamic. <laughs> yeah, he's a very <clears throat> aggressive uh, pass catcher. Um, you yeah. kind of really love to see that. Um, it's one of those guys you can put the ball anywhere around him, and he'll, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's going to make a play, play on, on it. it. Yeah. Exactly. That was a, that was a bad uh, loss for not just because of the result, the blown lead and the opponent, but it really yeah, hurts Colorado's. Ball. Yeah, the bowl yeah. they needed. Because Two more wins, was, and you were counting on that one being a automatic yeah. one. And now, yeah, now the, the rest schedule of the schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because now you got to go to like, uh, UCLA, uh, yeah. Oregon State at home, mm-hmm. Arizona yeah. at home, which we know is a lot yeah. tougher now. And then you end with two right. road games at Washington State and at Utah. Yeah. So but very well, mate. I mean, they may very well not win another game, but very well could still get to six. I mean, it's possible, mm-hmm. but very less likely. But, I mean, you would have uh, much rather have had all those games as well with one more. Mm-hmm. One more we needed. Now with two? Uh, yeah. No, two um, going, two's happening. <laughs> yeah, like I said, a few weeks ago, we might have said, okay, that they will easily beat Arizona at home, and then they can just mm-hmm. steal one of those other games. Mm-hmm. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, now it's looking, never, that's going to be tough. It is going to be tough. Um, any other results from this week you want to go over real quick? Oh, well, you know, I thought it was kind of surprising that um, some of the Big Ten results were kind of crazy. The fact that, uh, you know, Iowa really took it to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Illinois took the bad loss to Nebraska last week and turned around and beat Maryland this week. Like, what in the world is going on? (laughs) Yeah, and they uh, really, yeah, held that Maryland offense in check, too. Um, yeah, that's kind of a surprising one to me because Illinois hasn't been that good this year either. No, they have not. Because I mean, Nebraska the week prior, they if um, the score was closer than it should have been, like if Nebraska turned the ball over like three times in the red zone. Mm-hmm. So really, Nebraska dominated that game. And so I thought, man, you know, I thought for sure Maryland was going to take it to them, and mm-hmm. Iowa really took it to Wisconsin in Madison. Um, so that was cr- not that they scored points, but the fact that they didn't—they never do. But then their defense really shut down. Yeah, they just. Any, uh, and you know, it's uh, the crazy thing is, as much hype is you know coming into the season, man, we all kind of thought, well, you know, this is gonna be a epic uh, Wisconsin offense. It really hasn't been near as amazing as what maybe we thought coming into the season. No, uh, not at all. Um... Yeah, it'll yeah. take probably Luke Fickle some Tanner. time to get his players in there. Right, but we got man, you know, got a long-term guy and a, a, a Tanner Mordecai coming in. We know he can swing the ball. You know, maybe not the right system, but, you know, for one year and, you know, maybe it'll be interesting to see what happens. And it's been far from interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and um. then, and then I was shocked at that uh, that TCU game. Uh, you know, as much as they struggled, um, and then they lose their quarterback, and then they, you know, really took it to BYU with the forty four to like eighteen or twelve. And I was like, yeah, no, it was, it was a very yeah, easy win for the Horned Frogs. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, you wonder if that was a team that maybe just we know they're good, they're a good team, they're well coached, um, yeah. and maybe that was yeah, just was a just team that tired of losing. <laughs> Yeah, that and maybe just a team that because of so much turnover, they were just they needed to get in a rhythm and get gelled as a team and units, you know, different right. units. And now they're finally starting to gel and work together. Mm-hmm. So maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe TCU goes on the run here. Um, yeah. They do have yeah, schedule probably, wise. Um, their schedule is tough at the end. Cause they still yeah, have they, they, still if, have if they're into one, the their next OU couple of weeks. Or... Yeah. <laughs> couple road trips coming up to Kansas State and Texas Tech, so that could be tricky. And um, then, yeah, you mentioned Baylor or Texas, then Baylor at home and, and OU. 
Yeah. So, but weird. You know, both uh, OU and Texas looking for a little revenge there from last year. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then uh, talking about Texas Tech, man, Kansas State went into Lubbock and won. I was like, what mm-hmm. in the world is going on today? <laughs> it's just a lot of craziness happened yesterday. Like, just a lot of games where you really didn't think that, you know, bad teams that you really didn't think were going to win games really took it to folks. And I was, it was just a crazy Saturday. A lot of weird stuff happened there. Not a lot of the, you know, big games, but, you know, some of the smaller, you know, mid, mid, middle middle games was uh, kind of a lot, a lot of weird results. Mm-hmm. I guess it's just um, signs of this whole season. It's just, you just never know. <laughs> no, absolutely. And then um, you got uh, results like that Florida-South Carolina game was uh, – mm-hmm. Kind that of was crazy. A good game. That was yeah, a good game. Um, the Gators get a good win. They do get a good at, win. In an up and down season. Um, but you know, overall, there's still, I mean, what are they now? Four and four and two on the season? Yeah. Five and two, three and one in the five SEC. Two, yeah. I mean, and as bad as they at... started in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, at one point, we were like, man, is this team going to win three games? And now they're. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean they had their shot against Georgia, not likely, but they're I mean they're very much still alive and everything in the SEC East. Yeah, uh, I mean the cocktail party can be wild. Um, and you know we mentioned teams they they're another team that end of schedule that's brutal for them. Oh yeah, uh, they end that, their season yeah. with trips Everything to Baton Rouge tough. and then Columbia, yeah. Missouri, and before hosting Florida State. So, yeah. um, and even that Arkansas game, you never know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, who knows? In a, in a month and some change, we might be talking about how Florida ended their season with five straight losses. So, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, exactly. But, yeah, there's a, that's definitely a br- brutal schedule. I mean, they're, you know, between this year's schedule and the next year's schedule, the SEC has done Florida no favors for sure. No. <laughs> uh, not at all. And then, uh, let's see, some uh, down there in the – Mid majors and all that. We had uh, Air Force and Tulane jump into the rankings. Uh, Air Force first mm-hmm. time this year. Tulane back in. Uh, Air Force uh, big win for them over uh, Wyoming. Um, yeah. Another another good game late last night. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, Thirty four twenty seven win for Wyoming. Um, I think they yeah they scored a late one to uh, break a tie. Um, and then Tulane beat Memphis. That was a what, Friday night game, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. In Memphis. So it's a good win. Uh, I kind of rolling along in the American there. Um, you know, they got some a lot of winnable games on their schedule. Uh, they do. They really would think that they should finish this year. They should run the table. One. Yeah. They um, should run the table. Well, they who knows? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. They said they shouldn't run the table. And then my thing with the whole poll, they're talking about the little guy. Man, when is James Madison ever going to get in the top 25? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's got to come next week if it doesn't come. Yeah, right? I mean, they're right. I mean, I know they're right, right there. They're 26, basically, in both polls. But I was like, man. What are no they going to do? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they you know, beat a good team yesterday. Mm-hmm. They're playing good and great football. I mean, hey, what do they have to do? And if they, you know, if they run the table, they're probably not going to jump to lane. But, I mean, that's tough to keep. You know, they always put a New Year's Six. Well, and are they uh, are they eligible? I, I, I oh, forget that. Yeah, are they on that? Because that, you know, they're weird in that transition year. How, yeah. I forget, sometimes I forget like what year the folks are. <laughs> and I, yeah, the, my, that's my thing. I can't even I can't even ever remember uh, if they're eligible, who's eligible, who's not. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it would be a shame if they didn't get some, some uh, postseason recognition. Them. Exactly, because I I still don't understand the the whole the whole thing with that. Like what? Is the purpose of a team not being able to go to a bowl game? 
or in the, you know the basketball if they win their conference, but it's the only second year in Division One. Oh, the second place team gets to go to the tournament. Like what? What? What does that serve? What purpose? I've never understood what the reason behind that is, or what why they wouldn't get what they won. <laughs> like, so yeah, no, they are not. Uh, not eligible. Not eligible. Jeez. But uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's just one of those dumb NCAA rules. Like why a team yeah. gets banned There's from no postseason rules. play the first two years after jumping up makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. I mean, we're punishing the team because they wanted to move up to a more a tougher competition. What? Yeah, <laughs> it makes no sense. If they if they come into the cup tougher competition to win, hey, let them in. <laughs> they deserved it. They done a heck of a job. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, next week, um. Pretty big uh, lineup again. Of course, we got the third Saturday in October in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, um, and we mentioned Alabama wants revenge for uh, last, well, last year. year. You know, um, sure. no more Hendon Hooker, no more Jalen Hyatt for Tennessee, uh, mm-hmm. no more Pete Golding to pick on. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, even interesting yesterday, matchup. I mean, overall, the, the, I mean, even yesterday, I mean, for the most part, the defense looked, looked good. I mean, it fell mm-hmm. asleep a little bit in that second half, but. Overall, I can't complain about what the defense has been doing. And yeah, I mean, man, I think they'll be, based upon what I've seen from Tennessee's offense, I think they'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, might be one of those more ugly Alabama Tennessee oh, yeah. matchups. Uh, not quite a shootout. Yeah. yeah, I could see it getting back to like 17 uh, 14 type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and what was that? Uh, still one of my favorites the year we uh, were 05 when we beat them. Nine to six. six. Nine to six at the Roman or Harper. Six three, actually, I think, even. Six, yeah. Yeah, getting the ball out of there. One of the ugliest games, but one of the most epic wins. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was uh, great to be in that student section. Uh, man, when, uh, man, yeah, man. Roman laid that hit down, balling out the end zone, the DJ mm-hmm. Hall catch on the ensuing drive. Oh, and then, uh, epic. Yeah, and then uh, old money, Jamie Christensen, mm-hmm. booting one through the uprights. Uh <laughs> Uh, of course, I think the big tilt next week, Penn State at Ohio State. Um, yeah, that sounds tell us everything. Yeah, you know, huge <laughs> midseason rumble there in the in the Big Ten East and uh, big playoff implications. Of course, um, yeah, the loser of that one, uh, loser of that one, has to run the table to even uh, stand a Think chance. Yeah, because yeah. uh, they both have to play Michigan after this. So, yeah. And yeah, um, I mean, it's gonna be a big for because really, I mean, this is Penn State's first big competition game, and we've seen them blow out everybody. But mm-hmm. you know, outside of that first week against West Virginia, I mean, who who have they really played? So we'll find out about them on the road in in in, um, in Columbus. You know, if they're able to pull that off, they're for real. Mm-hmm. We shall see. Yeah, and this very is um... interesting. I did read one interesting stat talked about Penn State's lack of uh, explosive plays on their offense. That's something you would think they'd want to have ready to go to play Ohio State Um, because their defense has played well, but Mm -hmm. we'll see against, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. All right, yeah. Um, That will test you. But despite that, I mean, still a – Still an Ohio State team that's, you know they're good, but they're not, they just don't scare you. You know, if I'm, if there's a year that you're going to catch Ohio State, this is the year to catch them. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, the offense is good, but they they haven't found a running game. You know, uh, with Trayvon Henderson, um, he's been hurt a lot. And they, when he's not healthy, that running game, they become very one-dimensional. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you know exactly what they're bringing every week because they can't run the ball for any reason at Ohio State. But if this, if, if if Penn State ever wants to beat Ohio State, this is the time to do it. Because <laughs> I think this is, even though they're still good, this is the most vulnerable Penn State team. I mean, Ohio State team that I've seen in a while. 
No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Notre Dame, you know, arguably should have beat them in the horseshoe and should have beat them. No reason that uh, LSU can't. Or no, that was in South Bend. Sorry. But still. Yeah. But I mean, point point remains. Yeah. Uh, They're beatable. Yeah. They're very beatable. But it's a matter can you do it? And we know James Franklin struggles against Michigan and Ohio State at his time in uh, Happy Valley. So. Yeah, uh, I guess after that, uh, Duke visits Florida State. That's a really big, interesting matchup there. Um, it is interesting. You wonder if Riley Leonard will be healthy for Duke. Um, and you wonder how, you know, this is another one of those are you for real games for Florida State because you got to keep mm-hmm. your focus and yeah. – Take care of a game. I'm sure. Let's see. They are initially favored. Yeah, Florida State's thirteen and a half point favorites. So, mm-hmm. that's, that I mean, might I, be a little much, but maybe a little high. But I mean, I, I get why. I mean, they're mm-hmm. looking at it as whether Leonard's going to play. Also, they're looking at it. Um, we know how good that Duke defense is, but it's you know they definitely can't don't want to get in the. They're not ready for a shootout with Florida State. <laughs> They're going right. to have to ugly it up like they did against uh, Clemson. <laughs> yeah, They're gonna have, And how they did against, uh, you know, uh, Notre Dame. They're going to have to make it a physical game um, and keep it close and low scoring because they don't have the, the horses to keep up with that uh, with uh, Coleman there because, man, that, that Keon Coleman is a heck of a receiver. <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see, then elsewhere, a couple games maybe not as big as they initially were, but Utah at USC. Um, that was a big game. I mean, that's yeah. something that someone's fading in the Pac-12 because you don't want to get say, that second Losers loss. probably out of the Pac-12 race there for sure. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. But it, it's a big boost, yeah, for the winner. Um, either a good rebound for USC or – Mm-hmm. You know, an- another continuing kind of to rebound for Utah if they win that one. Um, right. You know, they're 14th and 18th, respectively. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting because, mm-hmm. yeah, be, you know, the Trojans have they've lost, you know, with this coaching staff from Caleb Williams, but they haven't been. Well, I guess they kind of got punched, but that was at the end of the Pac-12 title game. But in the mm-hmm. regular season, they really haven't been – punch in the mouth like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, they really got dominated yesterday, so it'll be interesting to see how they bounce back. Cause, you know, overall, I think, you know, they're a finesse team. They're not, they're kind of soft, so it'll be interesting just to see, you know, what, what their bounce back is like. And, you know, the Utah defense, I mean, they're, they're, they're probably watching, learn, you know, seeing what Notre Dame did. We know that they have a heck of a defense, so if they can ugly it up like that, who knows? Yeah, um, let's uh, start a couple, couple tough weeks for the Utes too. They go to USC next week, then they host Oregon the yeah. following weekend. So, yeah, um, yeah, and then uh, let's see Oregon. Uh, speaking of them, they'll have to rebound from their loss. They host Washington State, uh, as we mentioned. Uh, you're either catching the Cougars at the right time or you're catching a really desperate team. So that one might be tricky, but being at home. Being at home should definitely help. Yeah. And, um, you know, at the, I, you know, I think Oregon, you know, they have nothing to hold their heads down about. I mean, they went into a, a tough environment in Seattle. The Huskies are a heck of a team. I mean, they're still playing for everything. I mean – you know, they run the table. They beat Washington in the Pac-12 title game in the revenge game. I mean, they're very much, who knows, could very well be a playoff team. So, I mean, they're still playing for everything. No reason to hold their, hold their heads down at all. Just trying to get back to business. And I think they'll, you know, I think they'll be fine. Yeah. I would um, probably expect them to, based on uh, what, what I've seen from, uh, Watching the state the last couple of weeks, I would think that Oregon might house them. <laughs> yeah, it's um, been a weird season. Who knows? But that's what I would be. If I'm betting, I'm betting minus whatever the the favorite that the, the, the uh, Ducks go into that game because. Yeah, and Oregon could be coming in pissed off too. Um, yeah, that's. 
For sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then uh, trying to see any other interesting matchups next week. Uh, Clemson at Miami again. That's another one. It's kind of Clemson at Miami. Yeah, it's it's a interesting lot of now. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, loser of that one is officially. Uh, I love it. Well, yeah, they're. I mean, everybody's out in the ACC pretty much. No. Man. But yeah, that's just one of those like it kind of the season you want it's not going to happen. You lose this yeah, game, so for sure. Um, uh, Michigan at Michigan State uh, again, something mm. Michigan should win, but maybe their first kind of actual test of the year. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like Michigan State's a bad team. It's a rivalry game, mm-hmm. and Michigan State's had some good years. But but yeah, that's not a yeah, not a good I, team this I think, year. No, I think. That, I think it's not going to be much of a game at all. In fact, I'd be kind of shocked. No matter where the game's at this year, I, you know, Michigan. That even when yesterday when they started off slow, I mean, they've been blowing the folks out. Like I know they haven't played anybody, but they've handled business every week like they should be. They haven't had a slow. They've had a slow, slow start or two, but once they get going, poof. Mm-hmm. Um. Rematch of last year's Big 12 title game, TCU at Kansas State. Uh, Ole Miss visits Auburn. You would think that Ole Miss should be able to do what LSU fine. did to them. Hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see, an old old rivalry sparking back up, Texas at Houston. A um, couple of the Big 12 surprise teams, Oklahoma State visits West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, South Carolina visits Missouri. I'm talking about uh, West Virginia. They had a tough loss uh, Thursday night. The end of mm. that game was crazy with uh, with Houston, Houston there. They yeah. uh, you know got the late late uh, late um, go ahead touchdown with less than a minute, and then Houston hit the the hail mary. Mm-hmm. You know, saying bat the ball down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, tough. That was a crazy first uh, conference <laughs> loss for West Virginia. Yeah, they really. You know, they came near backing up their Neil Brown's crazy rant, you know, from this past summer mm-hmm. where he said, you know, they made this big rant about being voted to finish last in the conference. And yeah. He's, you know, they're following through. Um, yeah. Only two losses were that, you know, a, a Hail Mary loss and then lost to Penn State. To so Penn you can't State. really. So, hey, they're doing what they're mm-hmm. A lot more than what people thought, for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and then, like I said, I think that might be it for kind of interesting games next week. Yeah. Uh, at least Thursday matchups. And there are James Madison. They travel to Marshall Thursday. So you would mm. think a win there should finally mm-hmm. get them some top 25 love. Well, Marshall's um, had a pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they, they, yeah, James Madison at Marshall. Yeah, that's a... Wow, it's an interesting game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, the best trophy in college football, Memphis at UAB for the the, the bronze ribs or the gold ribs they play for. Mm-hmm. Uh, Battle of the Heck ribs. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, should be it for the college game. Um. NFL, not much going on. I wouldn't say it's a boring NFL season, but it's just kind of just chugging kind of along. along. Yeah. yeah, it's still got probably a few weeks before it gets really uh, hyped up. I guess up. just because, you know, it's a, it's 17 games. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you have certain room for error. Mm-hmm. You know, you you know, if you lose a game here, a game there, I mean, it might seem big that week, but overall, how big of a loss is it really? <laughs> Now, when they lose them four and five in a row, of course, that's all a different thing. But you know, just so much room for error. And for a lot of these teams, this is about making the playoffs, and everything mm-hmm. changes once you're in that playoff situation. Yeah. Um, I, you know, to me, I guess, a, you know, the biggest shock of this week is uh, you know, San Francisco losing to Cleveland after killing my Cowboys last Sunday. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, not only losing to Cleveland, but losing to Cleveland and Deshaun Watson. Um, yeah. So you figured that offense, offense, you know, last time out the Browns, you know, played mm-hmm. the Ravens at home and you no know, Deshaun and they Look, scored three they points and had less than two hundred yards of offense. Uh, 
they looked bad. Uh, you know, I picked mm-hmm. San Fran in the picks column this weekend. And yeah, who wouldn't have? Didn't get that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even after the bump, you know, that line bumped up with the news. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. But uh, maybe some injury scares. Uh, McCaffrey hurt and uh, mm-hmm. Debo Samuel both left yeah. the game. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely the big news of this week so far, leaving the yeah. Eagles as the only unbeaten team. But right now they're in a fight yeah, with the Jets. They're in a fight for their life, yeah. Yeah, when I just had a interception a couple of plays ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you never. The thing is, you never know with Zach Wilson. If I'm a yeah. Jets fan, I'm nervous every time he throws the ball because <laughs> mm-hmm. he's done some good things, but he's one of those no consistency. You just never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another. You know, the Ravens held on, beat Tennessee this morning. Um. The Raiders, you know, the, the Patriots have scored two touchdowns. Uh, big news. Big <laughs> news. Yeah, and they're, uh, they they're have the, the ball, two-minute warning. They had the ball, uh, 1917. Yeah, so, down to uh, the Rams the handling. The, yeah, they, they just need a play, and that, that's a problem. They don't have a bad drop in the Jets game right there. Um, they yeah, just that, – look, Mac isn't playing great. His, a lot of his fundamentals, it seems like his footwork's not the mm-hmm. same, but uh, us. he has no one around him. His line, his <laughs> his, his receivers. Lines. I mean, he's got Ramondre Stevenson in the backfield, and, and you know, yeah. Zeke's not what he used to be. So, and Hunter Henry's a pretty good tight no. end, but just nothing like, to work it's with. It's a bunch of dudes. Like, his ones are the other team's threes and fours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're the they're the guys that might have a, a great week once or twice a year because right. the other teams focused on the other stars, but Exactly. They're not guys that should have, be his number ones, yeah. Right. You can't have a room full of those guys. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um Yeah, so elsewhere, yeah, Rams looks like they'll beat the Cardinals, Lions looks like look like they'll beat the Bucks. Um mm-hmm. uh, earlier. Let's see. Commanders beat Falcons. Vikings beat Bears. You know, Bengals beat the Seahawks. All kind of expected results. Uh, Dolphins right. really easily beat the Panthers. I think the Panthers though, are the only. They did get up for. They did get up fourteen to nothing. <laughs> yeah, the, the Panthers. Panthers yeah, I'll say that. Lead. I was like, what? But then the Dolphins like, yeah. yeah and then that was yeah, nice. and then that was fourteen <laughs> nothing after the first quarter, and then the rest of the three quarters is forty two seven. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> Jags beat the Colts and uh, Texans beat the mm-hmm. Saints at home. Maybe that one was a little surprising. That was, Texans are yeah. three and three, man. The Texans um, are, you know, Texans are, uh, you know, way ahead of what people thought they'd be this year. Mm-hmm. You know, people thought, well, they might be a nuisance time again, but they're winning games. Yeah, <laughs> you have that's to take CJ them Stroud and uh, the, the receiver Stroud. Nico Collins. Yeah, that uh, that might be a pair we here for uh years to come oh wow yeah for sure because i mean you look at i mean if you look at that uh you know that texans i mean they could very well i mean they probably should have won last they definitely should have won last week against atlanta so i mean mm-hmm. overall they're having a heck of a season for for what it is i mean mm-hmm. and then they have games come up against you know next week against the panthers mm-hmm. um and they play the Bucks, the Bengals, the Cardinals, Jaguars. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of right. there's a lot of games on their schedule they could very well win. I mean, yeah, it's it's a winning one. They can win all of their division games. You know, there's no one yeah. else. And you know, there's as no we speak, in the division. Mac Jones I mean, drops his dime into Devontae yeah. Parker's hands, and he drops it. Golly. Mm, got to haul that oh, in. Had wow. a step on the defender. Yeah. Oh, I mean, wow. Mac put that ball. Yeah, he might have been like, yeah, perfect though. You what we're saying is stop him. hating on a boy, Mac. He needs some help. <laughs> Man, a perfect pass. I mean, you got to take – that's almost when you could have took to the house. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, yeah, they're, at, the, that what, they're, like they're that? at their own seven-yard line right now, and that would have put them over on the Raiders' side of the field. Yeah, easily. Um, now it looks like a penalty. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, that's kind of a good segue right there. Just a real quick – so obviously, you probably agree with me. It, all this Belichick is, you know, any talk about him getting fired is ridiculous. It's Bill Belichick. Yeah. He's earned the right to go out on his own terms there. But 
So, you know, we hear it all the time with Alabama and stuff, you know, is the Saban, is he cooked, is the dynasty over? Post Brady, you know, Pats just haven't really been that great. Uh, no, they haven't. Is Belichick just in it trying to get to that overall win total now, or does he still got something in his tank? Ooh. I don't know. He's closer to the overall loss category than he is the overall win because he's <laughs> right behind Dan Reeves in that, and Mag just took the same thing. Oh, yeah, and just a safety now. Uh, that offensive line just, you know, as soon as Max stepped See, back, he. Yeah, and that's pretty much the ball game right there, I would mm-hmm. say. But yeah, you know, you know that we always had a, there was always a debate is it Belichick, is it Brady? I guess we kind of got our answer that it was more Brady. But at the same time, I mean, it, it's hard to say. Because, you know, for those first couple of Super Bowls, I mean, Brady was just another guy. He was good, but he was a guy. Yeah. You know, when they beat the when they first beat the uh, Rams in 02, he was a guy. They weren't winning because of Tom Brady. Maybe even that second Super Bowl, they're not winning because of Tom Brady. I mean, he's doing what he's supposed to do, but no one's like, oh, Tom Brady is this amazing guy. He really came into his time, and, you know, they played well off each other. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, Tom Brady went into a perfect situation once he left. Um, once he left, that first year in Tampa was just a perfect situation. <laughs> I mean, the defense was stacked, a plethora of wide receivers there. So I mean, uh, uh, I think he went into a great situation. But yeah, I mean, this Patriots though. I mean, you, you to say that you could fire Bill Belichick after what he's done for the last almost 30 years is crazy yeah no uh, uh that's man. crazy talk you know, at the very least you owe him one of these off-season discussions where you know in closed yeah. doors you say we want to go a different way and then in public you say yeah. oh bill belichick has decided that he wants to leave to step know? away yeah you at least make it seem like he left on his, left on his own because there's absolutely no because i mean who were the Patriots before bill belichick Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, then who? Bill Parcells got I mean, them were, going, but I mean, they were okay. But I mean, they weren't going to. Yeah, weren't a dynasty. I mean, they were sometimes a playoff team, hit and miss. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, it's a, you know, he's just one of those guys. He's a victim of his own success. Just mm-hmm. kind of like Nick Saban is so successful and wants it to go down just even a little bit, and everybody's like, oh, what's happened? What, what's wrong with this team? Mm. You know, <laughs> you know. Even yeah, exactly. last year, of course, we felt that you know it was such a failure for Nick Saban, and then where well, we had two losses, it could have very well been two wins, and we we're in the yeah. playoffs, and, and sugar that talk champion. even happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's just crazy. Uh, just have just a few small things change everything mm-hmm. <laughs> completely. I, I think what it is is people too. They just, I think they're getting the past couple of years just getting hyped up in the preseason about these things. Oh, the Patriots could win the East this year. You know, it's, it's a mm-hmm. wide open division. It's like, but still That's like not. we can't, like you said, you look at that receiver room, you have to know like it's those horrible. aren't, there's not a number That's one not, in there and there's barely a no. number two. Yeah. I I wouldn't want that on my, if that's a wide receiver court Alabama, I'm not excited about it. That's just Uh-oh. what it is. Honestly. I mean, there's guys. You know, if that's your third option, cool. But your one, that's terrible. And that's yeah. the one thing that I guess that's my, I guess that's my only knock on Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he think, you know, he's a smart, had that smartest guy in the room thing. And some of his draft picks, you're like, bro, <laughs> what is this? They, yeah, they're drafting the past yeah. five, six or so years, you know, is really. For a while, it was, it was pretty cool. You know, it was mm-hmm. cool for a while, you know, no name guys and they turn into something. But. Recently, it's been pretty dismal. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the Patriots game, that's official now. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, the other thing like too, you look at that and Mac didn't play, you know, his stats weren't mind-blowing, but he and, did and you look at that last drive. Like I said, Devontae Parker dropped. I mean, that was a dime. Mac Jones threw a absolutely right. great pass from Perfect, his own bro. end zone. Yeah. I expected uh, Junior I to catch that. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just a perfectly well-thrown ball. I mean, the coverage, he had the coverage beat. It wasn't like the only 
he saw someone last second, you know, to get his head knocked off or anything like that. He was past his coverage. Like, yeah, that's just crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, moving on. Um, we told you, do not follow our advice. Mm. And once again, our Sorry, major league bro. baseball predictions, horrible. Uh, I'm just not going to do them anymore. Because maybe I did jinx the Braves. Or who knows, maybe just the best lineup ever, quote-unquote. Should score more than, what, eight runs in four games. Uh, but, yeah, Philly beats the Braves. The D-backs sweep the Dodgers. Um, all those results, that might have been the most surprising to me. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the fact that they just blat. But you got to um, think about it. Two, two teams with over 100 wins apiece, 200 combined wins over, and yet only one playoff win. That's craziness. Yeah, uh, and then you know, don't forget you count the Rays too. They got knocked out in two yeah. games, and they were, but you know, a ninety-plus win team. Yeah, um, same with uh, Baltimore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the Rangers. You know, so three. You know, a uh, hundred win teams. Yeah. Um, just kind of shocking. And then the study is there. The Astros reached their seventh straight ALCS. Yeah. Um, yeah. All Texas become, affair. <laughs> yeah, all Texas, you know, Astros, Rangers, that'd be a pretty fun one over, you know, they got Philly and D-backs, okay. you would think uh, Philly's probably heavily favored in that one. Um, all right. They'll play game but one Monday. But if you're the, if you're, I don't, I just don't have that, again, for Major League Baseball, overall, that national appeal is just not there. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, I guess you're rooting for maybe a rematch with Philly and Houston, yeah. so you could Cause it, plug that, but yeah, I don't know. Right. Uh yeah. You get the Rangers and D backs, you're like, goodness. <laughs> hey, I'll take a Rangers. I'll I mean, be glad I mean, to see Rangers D backs World Series. I mean, it'd be good. I mean, if you like, I mean, I, I know you would. You know, cause seeing the Phillies again would be terrible. You guys got to figure out how to not play the Phillies at hey, least yeah. in, the, the, in the divisional round. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know they yeah, had some... y'all's number at the playoff for whatever reason. Yeah, some Philly fans found me on uh, Blue Sky. So that was fun. Oh, did they? I mean, it said some <laughs> bad words about the Phillies, but you know. Uh-huh. Uh, That's fun. But no. Um, well, real funny is one of the pictures this guy sent me, mm-hmm. uh, it was in reply, was just a picture of what appears to be a Phillies player flipping you off. But if you actually look at the picture, it's him holding up his ring mm-hmm. finger. So if they don't win, I'm going to go back and remind this gentleman that, you know, he foreshadowed this. And all he was doing was actually showing me that, look, we're not going to win any rings either. Um, Mm. But, yeah. So the middle finger would have been a much better idea. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know if he just didn't realize in this picture or he thinks it's the middle finger. But it's clear if you look at the picture, it's the guy holding up a ring finger. And it's empty. Um, Yeah. Mm. That's weird. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. But, um. Yeah, that's the weird thing. There's just nothing to explain. There, it's just the Braves bats. Everyone worried about the pitching, you know. But the Braves, like I said, the lineup, yeah. one of the most potent lineups in Major League history, scored eight runs in four games. Yeah, and that's crazy. You got to do better. Um, you know, they get shut out for the first fifteen innings of the series before that great comeback in Game Two. So you get really blown out, out in Game sweep, Three. <laughs> hmm. I mean, it very well should have probably should have been a sweep. Yeah, and, and no, yeah, came uh, two was, you know, and honestly, I thought you know after they won that epic game two, I thought well then maybe that's what they needed to turn it around, and you know maybe yeah. it's gonna be hard for Philly to bounce back. But, and yeah. that was really the whole, uh, that was the theme of the series. Philly just every time you know they they hit back, uh, mm-hmm. you know the the Braves and one game one and four, you know stranded too many guys on base and then Philly would take advantage. And then, you know, uh, you know, the Braves just, the Phillies finally ran out of outs in game two, but then mm-hmm. game three, the Braves went up early, but then Philly responded and then, and then some, and then game four, you know, the Braves go up one, nothing, uh, what, like the third inning and you're like, okay. Yeah. And then immediately what happens, the Phillies respond. Uh, yeah. So that's, you know, maybe they're the favorite now with that lineup. Um, and those two star pitchers. Uh, one thing I do, and I think I even said this online, but I don't think all these calls that, you know, oh, it's the playoffs fault, you know, these got to do something about it. I don't, 
that's too much. Like, I agree that there are some things that, like, the the teams that get buys, you know, you should reseed after the wild card round probably. Like, the Braves probably mm-hmm. shouldn't have had to play the Phillies. Right. You know, it's kind of a crappy reward for having the best record in your league. It's like, oh, here, here you go. You get the hottest team. Um, yeah. So maybe we should have flipped and, you know, the Braves should have got the D-backs because they were the lower seed. But still, right. yeah, you – you just got to play your game and hit, and they don't do right. that. Um, yeah. And you, so I, I would wouldn't mind seeing that change. And then, but you say that, but kind then in the other, best. yeah, in the other league, though, I believe that. the Rangers were, uh, you know, mm-hmm. low seed themselves. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, because I mean the Rangers should they had to go on the road beat. You know, they had, you know, fell, fell off at the very end to lose the division on the last weekend. Mm. Went on the road and they, you know, handled the, well, seemed like a good Tampa team. Mm. Made them look pretty, pretty bad. You know, they went on the road to Baltimore, made them look pretty average. Mm-hmm. You know, this Rangers team's been on fire. <laughs> it's just, well, you know, one of these things, these certain teams get up for the postseason and, you know, yeah. that's, uh, you have to you have to get up. And I think some Braves players have come out and said that, that like, you know, hey, no, it doesn't matter. I know a lot of people talked about all the rest you get. Mm-hmm. And, you know, basically their answer was like, we're professionals. If we can't, you know, you play the same way that. or play you our game after five days off, then, you know, we don't deserve to be here anyway. So, right. uh, but yeah, so um, like I said, we'll spare yeah, y'all tough. predictions. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's just you know, it's just tough, you know, for for these teams. I mean, mm-hmm. to win well over a hundred games and then your season just ends so quickly. It's just like my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it sucks because you you know the the Orioles were such a great story, and you'd like to kind of yeah. see them against the yeah. the Astros who have been there, you know, so many times before. Right. Uh, and then you probably you know, especially if you're major league the Astros baseball, are but, pretty much turned into the to the 20, 20, 20, well, 2010, 20, 20 mm-hmm. Yankees, they've kind of taken over that American League. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then you game one of that series is tonight. Uh, but then, yeah, and you, maybe in the NL, you, the MLB certainly would want to see Braves Dodgers, I think. Oh, yeah. Kind of I mean, rematch of some nice. past few seasons. I mean, yeah. Has, I mean, the, as far as the ratings, I mean, it has national appeal. I mean, Braves fans are everywhere. LA market Dodgers fans seem to be a lot of different places. So mm-hmm. ideally, that's what you want. I mean, the, now we got Phillies, D backs. I mean, other than you know big baseball fans, it's not going to get your casual eye on it at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think really the only thing that people are probably looking for is because even the Calgary fan know, of course, about Houston cheating. So I mean, that mm-hmm. probably still gets some eyes off that alone. But other yeah. than that, I mean. Major League Baseball ratings are probably going to be pretty low for the for the ALCS and the NLCS and then probably the World Series as well, other than your faithful baseball fans. Mm-hmm. No casual yeah. eyes are really going to be up there watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's you know, but so it goes. Um, yeah, yeah. You you think like I said, it's probably the Philly, maybe a rematch of last year, Philly and Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, but you absolutely cannot count out Texas and Arizona. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah as far as Major League mean. Baseball is concerned, they're probably <laughs> a little disappointed because now you know we're probably not going to get big time ratings off of those. Right. Yeah. Um, not at all. State of Texas will be huge, but <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Dallas and Houston markets are at least a little <laughs> bit <be> boom. <laughs> Outside of that, yeah, it's gonna be kind of, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I would, but yeah, I guess overall that the Arizona man, they, I mean, just epic. I mean, quietly had a good regular season, and then the playoffs. I mean, just took it to a different level. I mean, I mean um, they very well could be. I, you know, they might not. Probably not the favorite, just because the Phillies, you know, the bigger name, and uh, but man. They're a sleeper. I mean, that, that, that might be like that. Was it the old 2001 uh, Diamondbacks win it, win the title? Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Um. 
I think that should do it. Anything else you want to touch on for this week? Not a whole lot other than it is eight weeks, so it's always a good time to not eat anything orange, drink anything orange. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I always play, find the famous video of Irv giving us free mm-hmm. like, hey, Tennessee, watch out a few times this week and you'll be ready to go for Saturday. <laughs> watch, watch some of your favorite highlights or, you know, if you're not. Oh, yeah. You need to get angry. Watch the the reel of some of the questionable calls from last year's game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, do whatever you got to do. That'll do it. Um, Shouldn't take too much though. No, <laughs> yeah. enough to um, <laughs> and you know, pick a good cigar out. Uh, oh yeah, ready to smoke one. But uh, yeah, okay. um, so what's uh, done up real good for you this week? Done up for me really good this week. Uh, you know, just uh, another good week of. My daughter in school. I'm proud of her. Doing a heck of a job. Um, you know, doing some volunteer stuff. Grades are through the roof. Can't ask for too much more. How about you? Um, I'm going to say, I uh, mentioned the fall weather. It's, it's sweatpants season. It's always nice. It's always fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice and relaxed. Well, other than that, yeah. Good. Good sports. Uh Chilly season, mm-hmm. sweatpants season, oh, all those yeah. fun things that come with the colder weather. Yep. And uh, more sports. Yes, sir. So uh, that'll do it for us this week, though. Thank you for listening. As always, um, subscribe, rate us, all that. Tell your friends about us. Tell your rich friends about us. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, listen to everything else on the Alabama Take Family Podcast. Uh, check us out at thealabamatake.com. And... Uh, Keep it done up real good out there yourselves, folks. Greg, take it easy, man. Yep, see you, man.